But anyway, talking about Japan, um, this is really strange because Hold a on. lady in my... The, the, the first part was not strange? <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, that was. This is No, this is the really strange no, part. this is not strange at all. Okay. But talking about Japan, yeah. a lady in my, um, like, I guess mother's, uh, like an online Facebook group. Yeah. Um, was saying that, oh, she was a teacher. She was saying she was doing her monthly grocery shop. That's bizarre that she shops monthly. Why? Um, that's, a, that's, a, that's pretty good. Okay. Um, <laughs> and it was about 8 a.m. and there was all these students buying energy drinks at 8 a.m. in the morning because yeah. she was like, um, she was like, you guys want to know why behavior management is <laughs> so hard? Well, there's like a bunch of... Um, students buying energy drinks in the morning right this is the picture that they put up around their school to try and deter people from drinking energy drinks so this particular person this man his name's austin from sacramento california he started drinking energy drinks when he started like working long hours um and commuting and his wife or partner brianna got like a, a call one day saying he's he's had an accident or something like that. So, or something's happened, come to the hospital. She gets to the hospital and he's had a brain hemorrhage and he was in a coma. <coughs> oh my gosh. Um, bearing in mind, she was also... I can't, I can't, even, look, I can't even look at that. She was nine right? months pregnant as well. So she had a baby, was in his coma. Anyway, but um, <clears throat> they did a toxicology and that ruled out drugs. And the doctor said he thinks it's, due to excessive energy drink consumption that had caused his brain hemorrhage. Do we know how much he was drinking? It doesn't say how much he was drinking. Um, so he had Fine to have God, surgery. I've quit energy drinks. He had to have a number of brain surgeries. He had unexpected strokes, seizures, and swelling of the brain, and they had to basically remove the whole front part of his skull. So if you have a look at the picture, you'll see exactly what we're talking about. No. But he has like half a head, basically. It looks like half his brain's missing. But this picture is actually more <laughs> freaky than the bloody Japan dolls. Yeah, so I had to look into the energy <laughs> drinks a little bit further. So they, we, we know that they're high in caffeine. So they have mega doses of caffeine and sometimes other stimulants. Um, a rheumatologist, Rula Haj Ali, um, says that they find that some people who use them come into the hospital with strokes and severe brain hemorrhages um, and they're typically young people otherwise healthy in their 30s and 40s she said that um, they can get a stroke after downing an energy drink due to a reversible cerebral vasoconstruction syndrome which is or rcvs for short it's a sudden spasm of the brain's blood vessels that is that restricts the blood supply and causes the hemorrhage blood supply. Now, she said R RCVS is reversible. It's not a benign disease, but some people have a stroke and never recover. And in some cases, people can die. So they don't know exactly why the energy drinks trigger RCVS. Um, and they say sometimes some people have been consuming them for so long they become more sensitive to it as they as it goes on, but for other people, it could be their first energy drink and can happen. Wow! I know, and there's no of that. She's like, unfortunately, there's no way to test for who will develop RCVS and who will not. And I think the symptoms are basically like the worst headache of your entire life that comes on within minutes, and just um, is, like is, shaking. Does this happen to excess coffee drinkers? Is, this, is there any cases for excessive? Okay, don't take around my coffee. Maybe, <laughs> but if you consider that, doesn't one drink of energy drink have about seven ca coffees in it? I'm not sure. I think so. I'm not sure. Hey, uh, Siege, how many? Um, out, <laughs> yeah, how many? Um, no. Energy drinks? Do you did you used to drink? One a day. Oh, one a day. Maybe two. Oh, that's not excessive. Yeah. Maybe two a day. Depends on my because I used to do that four thirty shift. Yeah, and finish at five at night. If I was doing that, I'd have two. Right. So the thing Are about we... energy drinks that I only know from when I was in the states because I don't put it on the packaging here, but in the on the can in the states, it actually tells you that the the can is two servings, not one. So you're only actually supposed to drink half a can. Right. Oh. 
see, I used to have like the um shots as well. See, I was yeah, this started with those, didn't it? Like that. They Jaeger were bombs. What energy drinks became? No, 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 no. It will be the energy a, a, energy drink shot. Right. Oh. You remember those? Yeah, like yeah. Used to, you used to pick them up at like petrol station or something. Yeah. I don't. I think I had like one ever of those because they were just terrible. Mm. But I used to drink this, them every day. This seems like not to negate the seriousness of this, but this seems like just anything. Like any, you could pick anything in the world that people consume, and some people have negative reactions to them. Mm. Mm-hmm. The only thing that's not negative is this podcast. You can consume as much of this podcast as you like, and it won't be negative. Hmm. Oh. oh, a little commercial. <laughs> So I'm on another thing that says from drinking coffee to having SEX to blowing your nose could temporarily raise your risk of rupturing drinking coffee to having a brain aneurysm. Well, really? Mm-hmm. To having coffee and sex give you brain aneurysm. Could do. And blowing your nose can temporarily raise your how, risk how do people blowing of rupturing their nose? a brain aneurysm. Have you seen brain them on aneurysm. the football field, Siege? Some of them are like um, projectile, like, yeah. like you don't want to stand in the way. They could kill you. Especially when they hold one nostril and they f- they blow, it's like far out, mate. You left it then in the ground. And so these are the percentages as risk risk percentages that can contribute. There's eight factors: coffee consumption, ten point six percent. Wait, this is the fraction of subarachnoid hemorrhages that can be attributed to a particular trigger factor. Right, coffee consumption, ten point six percent. Vigorous physical exercise, seven point nine percent. Nose blowing, 5.4%. Wow. <laughs> SEX, 4.3%. What? What are you, what? <coughs> SEX a- is a- less than blowing your nose? Yeah, straining Emma, a- a- to Emma, poo. Emma, but by the way, we are all adults here. You can actually say the word sex. <laughs> straining well, to poo. listening to this podcast? <laughs> yes. Like, I'm, I, I am not sure, but like. Yeah, we're all over 18. Yep. We're all okay. over 18. Yep. <laughs> and I, and sure I, I, and I no, like to think everyone, every, everyone here has experienced it. Mm. Well, it means everyone so, uses well. Uh, so straining to poop is three point six. Cola, Coca- three point six for pooping. <laughs> Coca Cola. I don't oh. understand. I'm, I'm, my mind's blown. That like blowing your nose is a five, and sh- on the on the shitter where you're on. Hello, the- where's your nose compared to your? Yeah, it's Ass. like right next to your brain. Pressure. pressure in that. Yeah, it's pressure in your brain. You go, you're squinching everything up in the head. It's I'd hot in the asshole. I'd say having a baby should be on here. Anyway, Coca-Cola, 3.5%. Being startled, 2.7%. And being angry, <laughs> so, 1.3%. So, so going to that first city in Japan and having the shit get out of you could cause a sandwich. <laughs> where, where does energy drinks fall on this scale? Then? Yeah. Hmm. Nada. I think that comes oh. into the coffee consumption because they've got such a me- massive mega doses of coffee, caffeine. Mm. <clears throat> so mm. that would be the first one, ten point six percent. I, that I find was the funniest from thing Science Daily. That, by the way, Emma couldn't say the word sex. <laughs> <laughs> go on, go on, do it for us. No, no, you can do I'm fine. It. Say it. Say no, it. no, I'm all good. Um, <laughs> so is it so, weird that when I saw the picture of the guy, like, I I just didn't have a reaction to it because he's not the first person I've seen with half a head. Oh, yeah, like the half a head kind of freaked me out. I was like, this is weird. I've, Why has he got half a head? So Who else? A, a slight tangent, but um, there's a guy I watch on YouTube who's a BMXer, um, and oh, you've I talked first about started him. watching him four years ago. Uh, you'll know this because we talked when, yeah, we when talked I went to New Zealand I just started watching oh. so he I started watching him and then within a week or two weeks of me watching him and this guy by the way was a nine times X game medalist like very very good at BMX globally known invented new tricks kind of guy so once two weeks after starting watching his channel he had an accident where his tire in like a pothole basically, and he just flipped over the handlebars and smacked straight into the ground. Um, and he had to have the front half of his skull removed like this. Far um, out. So since watching that channel, I've now just been watching this ex-super athlete go through from 
full paralysis. He's now back on his bike and riding his bike again. He's still quadriplegic, like he's still not got full motor functions and everything. It's really impressive to watch. Scotty Cram, my YouTube channel, I recommend giving it a watch if you want some hey, 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 inspiration. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. hey are, are, they, are they paying us? <laughs> no. We don't, when, 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 he, when, he, when he gives us a sponsorship, then we'll advertise. If channel. I ever own a club, I'm having CJ on the door. <laughs> I'm having him on the door. Can we come in? Have you paid your cover uh, cover charge? No, no. Then stay out there. Hello. Uh, he'd be so my, is, he'd definitely be my so doormate. is his brain still the? Ho he has his whole brain. It's just the skull is removing part no, of the no, skull. No, no. There's no brain there. Like the back it can't be. There's it's it is the back half probably. But isn't the front half is where you do most of your thinking? Frontal cortex. Because I was thinking yeah. maybe his brain's still in there, but it's not propped under the thing, and it's just like yeah, I don't think you can squish a brain in. No, but well, it's not you, like they go. I can make it fit. Your brain doesn't take up like the entire space inside the skull, does it? That's why you can get like. That's what I was thinking. Stuff, because I'm not, I'm not sure about you, but mine does. All right. Oh. I, yeah. I, I'm not sure about mine does. And your brain, I got a your big brain, brain. It needs space to be able to swell as well. Mm. My brain's okay. always swollen. I say that. I, this guy what, does look like his missing half What I thinking I do. I'm, I'm researching this. He does look like Steph Curry oh. from the side there, right? Like, I'm not the only one who thinks that. In the black and white. I didn't, nah, I didn't see it. I, I, I looked at it for a couple of seconds and I, and I had to turn away. The first time I saw someone with half a skull was when I was a kid. And I remember a news article about a guy who worked on a cargo ship. And the crane was moving something that accidentally dropped it and it just clipped the guy and took, like, smashed his head, but not enough to kill him. And that's a remove from part of the skull. In, in, in that situation, I would prefer probably to, you know. I think yeah. living. Doesn't... I mean, he wasn't. It's like, this guy's missing for, for an half the skull. I think living is a, a good option. It's I'm not it. sure if I it's want to live hemispherectomy. like with like, my brain missing. Mm. Why? You're not going to notice. Yes, I am. Unless, it, well, when you're not looking in the mirror, <laughs> it's not like you're sat there. Like... So apparently this particular <laughs> surgery, hemispherectomy, has no apparent effect on personality or memory. First performed on a dog in 1888. Um... And then what did the dog do to deserve that? Dandy pioneered the operation at Johns Hopkins University in 1923 on a brain tumor patient. The man lived for more than three years before succumbing to cancer. But then it's they do it for some people with um, like loads of uncontrollable disorders as well, supposedly. But um, Let's see. She, this sixteen-year-old girl, was suffering loads of seizures. They stopped once she did it. Um, loads of people who suffer dozens of seizures every day, and that the medication doesn't work on. This seems to cure that. Like what the? Actual? I feel so, like this is kind of experimental, where they're just like, yeah, uh, we don't know how to solve this. This does work. It's probably not the best solution, but let's just take away part of the brain. Talking, talking about e experimental, right? Have you ever watched Lucy? The movie Lucy? Isn't yes. that a scary with Morgan, one? Yes. With Morgan no. Freeman? Yeah. and, and um, Is this Scully another horror? No, no. And no. Um, there were like, when Morgan Freeman was doing his theoretical um, talks about the brain and stuff, right? And then they started comparing our brain and we use probably maximum up to 10%, maybe. And then they were talking about the dolphin and they used 20%, right? But their 20%, has evolved i don't know how much is factual because i'm just yeah seeing it in my head but they have a sonar inbuilt sonar and that's why they're like dolphins mm -hmm. that's why they can see spatial aware like uh, s spatial awareness yeah oh, spatial awareness. My attempt and they <laughs> sorry go on um and then um so yeah they use sonars and that's 20 percent of the dolphin the dolphin used 20 percent of their brain right oh. anyways there's this drug another made up thing but it's a great concept so whenever like the baby gets their full about to become and get their form there's this thing that um that the wife uh the that mother produces is cp4 they i don't know if it's made up but 
it's CP4, and this is the chemical uh, that are you, gives. Are you actually quoting the movie? Yeah, the quoting the movie. But I'm just okay, saying, as a con- sure. just as a concept, right? It's just interesting as a concept to say that they took that chemical that the mum produces, CP4. They synthetically created it, mm-hmm. and then this woman accidentally took a large dose of this CP4, which allowed her to open up her brain and see a hundred percent usage of the brain, which is like as a concept is is wow. Imagine mm-hmm. you could. So, Anyways. from my understanding, or a couple of thoughts on this. My understanding: the whole ten percent usage of the brain isn't to suggest that people only use ten percent of the functionality of their brain, but they only use 10% at any one time. You at use 100% time, yeah. of your brain. Yeah. Oh, Which you? makes me think if you used 100% of your brain all at once, you'd probably just be having a seizure. Oh. But having the ability to do it 100%. Without a seizure. Without a seizure. But all those, if you get like, you use your parts of your brain to do different things. So like, you'd just be doing all of those things at once. It's not like, it's not like a battery yeah. and you're saying, or a CPU and you're like, oh, we only use 10% of the power. It's like, no, they actually just do different things. It's like trying to drive a car, watch TV and iron at the same time. Like, why would you want to do that? Because maybe, I didn't know that. maybe the perspective could be like, it could open your, like imagine smelling everything. Like, cause so like you said, we only use 10%, right? So imagine that limits the, the amount of sensors that we can use at one time. But imagine if we're doing something and we can use all senses at the same time. We like the, it, the, the perspective would totally change. Like you yeah, could it'd feel, be breathe. A bad experience. That's what I mean. Like I don't, I don't oh, see a way this right. is a good thing. I see it more as a bad thing. Oh. He's think thinking it would be thing. it would be too much on your body, maybe. I mean, think about Bruce Almighty when he first gets the powers, and now we can hear everyone's like that was a terrible time for him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're having to. This is a hypothetical, whereas nothing bad happens. Um, my other thing, Would dolphins. Like unless you go to that place in Japan, this was kind of cool with the dolphins' brain thing. They can make they they when they sleep, they only sleep half of their brain at a time. Oh, who's that? Oh. Dolphins. Yeah, they have to. So like half so of their brain sleep. All these sleep. They, I brought up. They that have thing to be like still the... alert. Oh, that'd be kind of cool. That what? thing about the ten percent, and it brought up that movie. Hey, Lucy, it's funny. It's a, it's just an interesting concept. So, uh, like, so if the, if but the that was a terrible Dolphins, movie. Yeah, it was a terrible movie. But the con- like, you got to see it as the concept. Maybe the someone concept needs to redo amazing. it. Um, twenty percent that the dolphin use at one time, like they can use up to twenty percent at one time. The dolphin. Oh, I don't know. You said that. Yeah, was... well, that's what they said in the movies. But like what I'm saying is if if we're able, I don't know. I don't know if it, you're, you're right. If we use 100% of our brain, it might be just overwhelming at the begin. I don't know. But I, I just, just wonder what where our it. brain would evolve into if we start using more at the same time. So like, my, see how my thought is the the reason that we don't do that is because there's an evolutionary advantage to not do that. 